Hey, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite songs. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. My top 50 favorite songs of 2021. Now, I'm in a bit of a pinch here because um, I will be leaving Hong Kong in like two days. And right now it is 2, p uh, 2 a.m. in the morning in Hong Kong right now. So I'm going to try to keep my voice down. So yes, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I uh, won't be able to finish uh, all the list videos before I leave Hong Kong on December 25th. So my movies list will be at the end of the year while right now I will speak as fast as possible. So let's start off with the honorable mentions. Mon Laferte with Cancion Feliz. You know, if a song calls itself a happy song, you know it's not gonna be happy. Next up, we have Emdao Mokhtar with Afrique Victim. I don't include African music on my channel a lot. And by African, I mean purely African, not African American or African European, just purely African. So uh, yeah, this is a really good lengthy psych rock track from Niger, check it out. Afterwards, we have St. Vincent with the track Down. It's a funky song, that's kind of nice. Next up, Sons of Kemet with Hustle featuring Koji Radical, a really bouncy, jazzy, uh, rap sung track with a lot of personality. Bruno's Pernadas with Family Vows. This is a very sweet and endearing one. Lil Nas X with Industry Baby featuring Jack Harlow. While I think this track is a little bit one note production wise, I still think it is a banger and I like the song. All right, Radiohead, my favorite band with If You Say The Word. Unfortunately, they're not able to make the top 50 this year, but I still really like the song. This is a song that is shelved from uh, from a long time ago and they just release it for the Kid A and Amnesia 20 year anniversary and it is a haunting eerie ballad that has some awesome lyrics and performances. Next up uh, from Wales, Marina, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. Then we have Low with White Horses, a, a glitchy, noisy, clunky, also kind of optimistic poppy opener for their latest album. Then we have Yola with Starlight. And then we have Boldy James, Fake Flowers featuring Freddie Gibbs and Currency. I love the drumless loop. I love the performances. So charismatic. Then uh, from Hong Kong, Sea All Star with Ma Yi Doi Fu or uh, Maldives, which is a really relaxing, somewhat jazzy bit of, of uh pop music of canto pop that is very soft and warm and cuddly and then we have a song from a from a vtuber yes i'm a weeb i'm a loser i know uh but this is a legitimately amazing song this is uh by the vtuber uh tsukino mito and uh from the uh vtuber company niji sanji and this is the track sore yuke ga kyuincho which i don't really know what it means i know that ga kyuincho means school class president or, or or just class president but you know you get the idea yeah this song is like way better than i'd imagined it to be wow what a grand opener with blasting horns and instrumentation just absolutely explosive and welcoming album opener actually the second track but you get the idea and um it is magnificent then at the very end of our honorable mentions list, we have ABBA with Don't Shut Me Down. Yeah, it's been 40 years, but they still got it. It's still a jam. All right, top 50. At number 50, we have the Weezer song, All My Favorite Songs, because, of course, I have to include all my favorite songs in my favorite songs list for the irony. But it is legitimately good, sort of this down-to-earth, piano-driven rock song. At 49, I'm giving it to Caroline Polacek with Bunny is a Rider, a legitimately catchy and groovy art pop song. I love the beat, like the lyrics. At 48, we have Bet Cover with Kai Ten Ten Shi, which is, uh, which literally means a revolving angel. Like Kai Ten is kind of like revolving, like a revolving sushi. And yeah, you know, if you want a nice dose of soft Japanese rock music, go ahead. And then at 47, Finally, finally, a song from Hong Kong, my home, my own home where I'm born and raised. Finally, a song from my home, 
in the list, and that is Serini with I'm Fine Thanks, which is a legitimately good, a legitimately catchy 80s flavored pop song that has some really good production. The vocals need a little work, but overall, this is a very tight, awesome, catchy pop song. I'm, I'm proud of Hong Kong. I'm proud of being a Hong Konger. Yes! All right, next up, we have 46, Turnstile with Blackout, which is pop punk, but upped to a dreamier level, but also at the same time, a more digital level with its sequenced beats. Absolute blast of a chorus. Very tight musicianship. Great track. At 45, I'm giving it to Shushu, A Bottle of Rum, featuring Liz Harris of Grouper fame. And uh, yes, given that it's Shushu, it's a really weird art pop song, but this is also probably the most calming, sweetest, and endearing songs that Shushu has ever put out. At 44, I'm giving it to Dark Side with Liberty Bell, an atmospheric, cognitive, cerebral, driving, electronic piece. And at 43, it is Injury Reserve with Knees, which is a very special song because there is nothing catchy about this song. This song is not here to entertain. And because of how chopped up and glitchy and deconstructed and weird this song is, it becomes gut-wrenching. It, uh, uh, it is chest pain uh, turned into a song. This song really stings. It hurts. And partially it's because Injury Reserve's latest album is incredibly abstract and dark. But and also uh, in another way, I think this song is a really sad but also powerful homage to Groggs, who is a member of Injury Reserve who has passed away not too long ago. So uh, yeah, very special, very special song. All right. Anyways, at number 42, Arca with Ripples. This thing slaps. This thing is totally insane, fiery, noisy, industrial, glitchy, uh, clubhouse beats. Uh, club. I don't know why I keep saying clubhouse. Club beats, just uh, fiery insanity, and I love it. Also, another electronic track that I really love. At 41, we have Toriana with Xi Q Xi, which is an amazing, tight-paced uh, intense hardcore EDM with some really dramatic church choir vocals at the back. All right, at number 40, I'm giving it to Tyler the Creator with Lumberjack. Tyler has returned with another total friggin' banger. It's tight, it's simple, it's to the point, and it's amazing. At 39, I'm giving it to Richard Dawson and the Finnish band Circle coming together with the track Methuselah, which is a weird and exciting crowd rock, art rock track. I'm on the edge, I'm on the edge, I'm on the edge. It's just a really fun one. At 38, it is uh, from uh, all the way from Shijia Zhuang in uh, Northwest China. This is Wanneng Qinian Lü Dian with Ni He, or an English Omnipotent Youth Society with their album opener, Muddy River. And this is a gorgeous blend between prog rock as well as traditional Chinese music coming together for a very beautiful, calming portrayal of the Chinese countryside. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put politics aside. This, this is an awesome song. It's not a single, but it's awesome. All right, at number 37, uh, Yukika with a wool or a love month total friggin slapper uh yukika here blends k-pop with city pop for a very sweet and kind of a, a surreal uh, experience here and uh, the chorus is very catchy i love to snap my fingers and groove to it and uh yes 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 k-pop on my list yes i'm serious all right at number 46, we have uh, Nana Ray with Salmon Cannon Deluxe. This, this track makes my head explode. This is uh, some of the most exhilarating and fun and noisy and insane electronic music I've heard in a long time. The uh, sort of delayed, sort of uh, scratchy beats in the middle of the track is just freaking insane. It's so fire and it's actually amazing. And not enough people are talking about 
Nanare. At 45, we have Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats Cosmic Dot M for a remix by The Alchemist and Joey Badass. And usually I don't put remixes onto my top 50 lists, but this one, this one is too good. This one is too good. I have to include it here. I love how The Alchemist basically turned this clunky, funny rap song into something more moody and something more cerebral. Joey Badass's vocals, uh, his, his delivery, his rapping on this track is very intense and it matches with Denzel Curry's delivery really, really well. I love the zooming and echoing and fading pianos of this thing. It's very foreboding. It's very weird and it is uh, just, just a rap song that I really, really love and I've listened to many times this year. All right, 40... Four, we have Sufjan Stevens and Angelo de Agostin with This Is The Thing. And this track is where Sufjan Stevens sort of, you know, bring it back a little bit and have a more raw and skeletal folk track. And the hook on the song is one of the most well-written hooks that Sufjan Stevens had ever written for a long time. I love the chemistry between the two and it is just a very wholesome folk track. Next up, 43, uh, actually 33, wow. 33, it is anime music. That's right. Shinsei Kamete-chan with Boku no Senso or My War. This is the opening theme song to the latest Attack on Titan season, the final season. And uh, what can I say? This is absolutely groundbreakingly amazing. This is my favorite Attack on Titan OP so far. And that's because this isn't just some dramatic epic rock music. This is bringing it to a whole new level. It sounds like a, a biblical uh, folk song, but just extremely dramatic and extra. It sounds um, it sounds very action-packed and intense and anxiety-inducing, sure, but there's also a very folky quality to it that almost makes the song sound like it's opening for a, a tall tale, a folk story where, uh, where somebody would read these stories to you before bedtime. There's that quality to it that makes it even more magical. The lyrics literally make no sense. They're not supposed to, but they still sound like, like army chants, which really fits the, the, the story of Attack on Titan and is just damn good anime OP. Lustis, lustis, lustis. At 42, we have another Cantonese song, and that is The Hurts with Yu, featuring, once again, Serini. And Yu means monster. And this is a surprisingly jazzy and funky pop song coming out of Hong Kong, which is something that I totally did not expect. It is a very tight track, and Serini's feature is actually pretty freaking good. It's a freaky song, it's spooky, and it's also very fun and self-aware. I love it. At 31, I'm giving it to Sharon Van Etten and Angel Olsen with Like I Used To, which is a 70s throwback duet track. Great chemistry, great vocal melodies, great performances. Sharon Van Etten and Angel Olsen is a great combo that a lot of people have been hyping up about, so great track. All right, at number 30, I'm giving it to Brockhampton with Buzzcut featuring Danny Brown, a total rap banger. I know I say banger all the time, but when I say it, I freaking mean it, okay? Brockhampton's Buzzcut. I love the eerie, noisy beat. I love Danny Brown's absolute freak show of a feature and the sudden turn into this dark R&B at the very end is just very creative and refreshing. At 29, I'm giving it to Kanye West with Life of a Party or a Life of the Party featuring Andre 3000. Yes, Kanye and Andre 3000 collab, a collab of the ages because both of these rappers are very influential and powerful, especially Andre 3000 who is in my top five MCs basically. And the song is a leftover from Donda because Andre 3000 uh, swore he said some bad naughty words. So it didn't end up in Donda because Kanye likes to keep it clean. But uh, this is amazing. Andre 3000 uh, delivers some very morbid bars about death 
and love on top of a very moody and kind of dark beat and uh, it is a fantastic track and number 28 i'm giving it to a uh, korean band paranol with colors and this is my favorite paranol track ever so far and it's not like they've released that much music but still my favorite song from the band so far and that's mainly because this track is a gorgeous and by gorgeous i mean really really freaking beautiful burst of colors it is at the same time glitchy and distorted and also at the same time kind of freaking depressing and sad and lonesome and all together creating this this really um this sort of uh this this mix of emotions that's both beautiful and humbling but also sad and downtrodden which results in uh, one of the most epic and uh, amazing tracks of the year at 27 yes another cantonese song you heard me right uh my little airport with yin or wallow and this is the very gorgeous album ending to my little airport's latest album and there's something so simple and beautiful and nostalgic about this track that makes the ending of the album so damn good the twang guitar at the end the hushed breathy soft vocals the whole thing is just amateurish but also because it sounds amateurish it's so sweet and young and i just love it and then at number 27 at number 26 actually it is king gizzard and the lizard wizard with static electricity what can i say i just love my moody stuff but uh once again king giz comes back with great musicianship uh weird but cool lyrics and uh, just a very great song and uh, it's just amazing that king giz would try all of these different genres and it would still work especially for static electricity here where they sort of dabble a little bit into um uh something that sounds kind of microtonal but also uh in a, in a moody way just love it at 25 i'm giving it to trico with inai uh <laughs> oh, this song uh, Trico, one of the most exciting rock bands from Japan right now coming out with this total freaking rock rager Inai, which means like don't have or, or have not and um, it is thrilling, it is dangerous, it is a lot of fun the chorus and the verses don't match at all but that's also part of the jagged aesthetic that this track is going for amazing vocal performances from eq the front woman and uh great guitars what can i say it slaps at 24 we have a uh, japanese breakfast who is actually a korean american paprika which is the very blissful and uh grand opening to her latest album with horns and strings and, and rolling drums very youthful and lively vocals it is just a sweet and and gorgeous experience whole way through and then at number 23 from denmark we have ice age with vendetta vendetta bum, 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 bum. yeah this is a very cold and icy song from the band ice age with their usual very drunken performance which i really love has a lot of style i love the music video as well i wait did i forget to include this song's music video in my music video list shit okay but but still still amazing song awesome performances elias's vocals are really great he sounds drunk but that's kind of their style and um yeah it's a barn burner at number 22, we have uh, Kiro Kiro Benito with The Princess and the Clock. Oh, 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 hiding in the chamber. Once again, Sarah Benito's vocals are very young and lively, and it just makes me feel giddy, like a kid, when I listen to the song. And I'm also really happy that uh, Kiro Kiro Benito is going back to their electro pop roots and uh, coming back with such a slam. All right, at number 21, it is Godspeed You Black Emperor with government came uh wow godspeed has released a good album and on top of that government came right here is another uh, very depressing dose of 
of uh, post-rock. It's so dramatic, it's so toxic and poisonous, and it sounds like it came out of a 1940s, 50s film noir score with its weeping strings. It's very slow and gradual, but powerful build-ups to climax. It is a very dramatic song, amazing, and uh, I, I would be a very happy person if Godspeed You Black Emperor would like do a film score or something. Actually, I think they did already. Have they? Have they made a film score? I don't know, but 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 if I was a movie director, which I actually will be, uh, Godspeed. Hit me up. <laughs> At number 20, uh, I'm giving it to Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock coming together as Silk Sonic with the track Skate, which is a very awesome, golden, vintage soul funk track with great chemistry between two two of the most promising mainstream artists and i see promising as if like they haven't released any music ever uh, they have i mean obviously bruno mars uh he's a he's a pop star superstar at this point anderson pock also super famous also very successful together they have a lot of chemistry great combo and i just love the vintage soul throwback it's just such a uh such a great aesthetic all right at 19 i totally did not expect myself to enjoy this particular track this much but i do and that is uh from paris faux chateton with ses bijoux de fer which means um the jewelry of the uh something about jewelry i i, I don't know <laughs> leave me alone i don't speak french but uh yeah this is um moody art pop music it's forlorn it's methodic it's mid-paced and this is basically the amazing world of chanson blending with art pop all right 18 we have magdalena bay with your fire your fire uh secrets and uh this is a peppy fun synth pop song with a dash of futurism I really love the very young and, and sort of youthful, I mean, young and youthful, same thing. I love the very young vocals by the, uh, by the girl, by the singer in Magdalena Bay. And I also really freaking love the keyboards on this thing. I don't know why it sounds so good. At 17, um, man, Kyari Pam You Pam You with Genten Kaihi. Uh, <laughs> Man, I, I, um, you know, last year's list in 2020, it's mostly sad music. This year, it's mostly childish pop music, but uh, I legitimately love Genten Kaihi. Wow. And uh, also, um, respecting the language here, if you look at my uh, list of songs, oh, I'm going to spoil it. Ooh. Oh, I haven't. But uh, as you can see, uh, Genten Kaihi right here. I love the production, actually. It, it isn't over bloated or super sweet or anything. It's got the very great uh, equal amounts of uh, funky, buzzy pianos, light, soft drums, and the bass is really nice. I like the vocals by Kyari Pamu Pamu. I like the lyrical topic of trying to move on and not trying to go back to your original point. So thus the title, avoiding the original point. Genten Kaihi, Genten being the original point. So uh, yeah, great track. At number 16, it is Jesse Ware with Overtime. Overtime. <laughs> it's so good, it's so freaking good. Like, I mean, yeah, it, this song is supposed to be like a, like a, like a friggin', uh, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, I forgot the word, man. My mind just went blank, went went blank for a second. Like the song is just so friggin' good. It's supposed to be a leftover. It's supposed to be a leftover from Jesse Ware's last album. But even the leftovers are that great. Obviously, Hot and Heavy is an awesome song. But what I like even more is Over Time, which is moodier, but it slaps so freaking hard. It's so groovy. The beat is so clean and concise. I love the vocals. It is seductive. It is smooth as hell. And uh, Jesse Ware just keeps pumping out those amazing disco songs. Wow. All right, 15. 
uh, an ode to music making. It is Porter Robinson's Musician. And um, it is great in many ways. It is uh, an awesome, uh, earnest, down-to-earth synth pop song. It is a blissful, spellbinding, futuristic, and also uh, I like the lyrics. I mean, obviously, at first glance, the lyrics sounds like it's written by a child, but this song is kind of like that. It kind of has to work this way in order to in order to explain to the world and and to uh, Porter Robinson's love interest in this song why he loves making music so much, why he devotes so much of his time and effort in making music, and uh, the result is a beautiful, gorgeous, youthful, lively pop song about making music. And also, bonus points for using a photo of Hong Kong as a single cover. I know, it looks great, am I right? Alright, 14, it is Genesis Owusu with Drown, featuring Kieran J. Callanan. This song is a blend of, like, post-punk and pop and neo-soul and hip-hop and it actually works, it, it actually slaps, it's so blissful and fun and exciting and optimistic. Kieran J. Callanan's feature is amazing on the song and um, I, love, I love the lyrics again, like given that I put these songs so high up on my list, I pretty much love the lyrics on all of the songs I mentioned from here on out. But uh, yeah, just a uh, <laughs> very interesting and uh, instrumentally absolutely uh, optimistic. Like if you feel down, if you feel moody, play this song, you're gonna light up. At number 13, we have Peggy, my man Peggy, Buttermilk Jesus himself, JPEG Mafia with Hazard Duty Pay. Once again, JPEG Mafia comes back with another amazing song. Every time JPEG Mafia releases music, one of his songs end up on my list because he's just that damn good of an experimental hipper hopper. And uh, this one is no different. This is amazing front to back, a great soul sample. And uh, he sort of manipulates this soul sample into these very hard hitting bouncy ass beats and these glitchy production, which makes it so much more stylish. And this style is just so uh, infectious and addicting and futuristic and uh yeah i love the very creative and animated flows by jpeg mafia here and i just think it's such a shame that it's not on spotify uh so instead in my spotify playlist that i'm gonna link in the description uh, i'm going to uh replace the song with og by jpeg mafia which is also a banger all right at number 12 it is Nonok or Nono Si with Memento. Now, uh, this song is actually from last year, but it is so great, I have to include it this year. I have to. This is the ending theme to the uh, latest season of ReZero, which is an anime. Yes, more anime music, I know. But um, I am addicted to this song. I listen to this song all the friggin' time for the last few weeks. I love it so much because once again, uh, what this anime ending theme song has pulled off is something that's sort of beyond the surface level. I mean, obviously the song here in question is very freaking dramatic, but also because of because it's ReZero we're talking about, this song is very magical. It sounds like a theme song to a fairy tale. It sounds like there are witches and, and elves in this world. But on top of that, this song is a beautiful blend of many different moods of hopefulness, of uh, hopelessness, of despair, of pain, of anxiety, of, uh, of excitement, of humanity, and it just feels so real and 360 degrees. I love the piano breakdown at the end, I love the vocals, and I know it's not like written by Nono Si, obviously a board of people probably wrote this song, a whole a board meeting worth of people, but it's still an amazing song and it is incredibly catchy uh, and also uh, just the drama, just oozing in this song. It's so damn good. All right, at number 11, we have uh, Madlib with Road of the Lonely Ones, which is an instrumental hip hop track 
and it is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous song with the most beautiful nostalgic soul sample you can find ever in a hip hop track, at least in 2021. Um, so much so that it really gives me uh, a nostalgic feeling, like 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 a kind of feeling that I've forgotten about, but it's still there. And this song kind of awakens that feeling inside me. It's magical, and uh, yeah, it's like watching the sunset. It's it's gorgeous. It's golden. All right, here is the top ten favorite songs of 2021. At number ten, I am giving it to. Black Country New Road with Opus. And Black Country New Road is the uh, is one of the bands in the very new and exciting wave of post-punk bands from the UK right now. And Opus is the album ending to their latest album for the first time. And I love it because what happens on this track is that they blend art rock with klezmer, which is this Middle Eastern uh, slash Turkish type of folk music and it goes together really really well but also it serves as a, a, a very strong and impressionable conclusive mark to the ending it's ultra fiery the instrumental highs are very very high and climactic on this track while the downs are very down and quiet uh, Isaac the frontman of the band I think, I think his name is Isaac, right? He provides some really descriptive uh, spoken word on the track, which is very nice. I mean, after listening to Black Country New Road, I feel like um, I start to narrate my own life in my head in Isaac's voice. Like, like, like I, I just listen to this album and I just fall in love with spoken word all over again. And uh, I love his very anxiety-inducing and forlorn performances as well. And uh, just a, a magnificent, bold ending to their album. At number nine, something that I cannot resist at all. And that is a depressing-ass ballad. Aoba Ichiko with Antivuto Nemute, which means Asleep Among Endives. Last year, Aoba Ichiko scored number one on my top songs of the year with the track Seabed Eden, Kaite no Eden. And uh, this year, uh, she is back in the top 10 again because that is how well written her songs are. Legitimately, one of my favorite female artists of all times, also one of my favorite Japanese singers ever, if not my favorite. I mean, the music she makes is magical to say the very least. She makes ballads that are really soft and slow and quiet and uh, definitely uh, to a degree sad but to describe a song as sad is surface level because the world is so much more complex than sadness and uh, Asleep Among Endives here is a beautiful breathtakingly gorgeous folk ballad that's also very sad but also eye-opening and calming and peaceful and at the same time uh, hopeful for the future and uh, the change in keys halfway is gorgeous it is creative and um, sometimes when I feel really down I listen to this song and it doesn't make me feel happier but it resonates with me it resonates with how I feel and I feel like this is a very specific type of feeling that only some music listeners only a portion of music listeners would really, really enjoy. But when you love it, you would really, really, really love it. It's magical, it's enchanting, and uh, it is great. At number eight, we have one of the greatest comebacks of the year, Sweet Trip with Tiny Houses. Sweet Trip is back after over a decade with another heap of uh, very sweet, syrupy, honey filled honey drenched pop music and uh, shoegazy uh, dream pop and tiny houses here is an absolutely amazing burst of pure dreamy energy it starts off kind of slow with the buzzing electronics and then it's almost like the, the clouds in the sky just 
float apart and we hear these very clear acoustic guitars and then we transition into the song which builds up to the climax and it is honestly uh, an absolutely gorgeous experience. It's like staring directly at the sun but in a very sweet way. It's just so intensely dreamy and sweet. It's just so buzzy and distorted and it's just like all these sweet noise just surrounding you and cuddling you intensely and that's how the song feels. At number six, Squid Pamphlets. Another post-punk band from the UK, Squid with Pamphlets, also an album ending and it is a song that is um, it's difficult to describe. It's exciting, it's sad, it, it is um, this is why I don't go outside, outside, outside. Uh, it's, it's weird, it has a lot of personality to it, and the very tight paced guitars and drums in this track is uh, addicting, I'm obsessed with them, and uh, yeah, great vocals, and obviously I'm really tired now, so you know what, I'm gonna stop my recording here, and go to bed, and the next morning I'm gonna finish the top five actually the top six right now it is the next morning and let's continue at number six i am giving it to lingua ignota with man is like a spring flower and even though this isn't a single in my opinion this is one of the most powerful and artistic songs of the year on this track lingua ignota talks about the heart of man and by man i mean yeah maybe she's referring to a male but i think in general she's referring to uh, the humankind and in this track she talks about how nothing is enough for the heart of man and how the heart of man just wants more and more and more and basically amps up this lyrical topic to such biblical levels as she always does and on this track in particular it is absolutely groundbreakingly amazing because of the very dramatic driving second half of the track with the snapping percussion and the and the very intense swirly strings and it all builds up like a film score it's very dramatic it's very epic it's really beautiful and it sounds like wandering far away from home just to feel some sensation and it is a very powerful song all right for number five <clears throat> this is going to be a controversial pick uh, but uh, I honestly really really love this song and I honestly think this song signifies more than it lets on and this song is Utada Hikaru One Last Kiss Yes, another anime song. You heard me right. Another anime song. Um, this is this is a very important one now when I first heard this song uh, One Last Kiss I was honestly a little bit uh, confused, you know, because One Last Kiss is basically the theme song for the final Evangelion film ever. And Evangelion is one of the most important, seminal, and influential animes in the world ever. And uh, it's been an, a very popular anime in the 90s, and then uh, there's a, the end of Evangelion, and there's 1.0, there's 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, and then finally we have a 3.0 plus 1.0, which got released. So, over two decades of this anime, of one of the most powerful and influential animes of all times, and it ends on this electro-pop song? What? But the more I listen to this song, the more I realize how beautiful and how how uh like amazing this song is and that's because when you're when you're writing a series that's so full of ups and downs that's so full of drama and 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 intention and and just has, has so much to unfold has such great concepts at the very end of course a lot of people may opt for a sad ending you know maybe bittersweet ending but there's something more than that and the world is so much more than just being super sad or deep or 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 just like like feeling bittersweet one last kiss this song here is an attempt to go even more beyond that again again this is a little abstract but a lot of stories go for this epic dramatic sad ending 
or, or a bittersweet ending as the ending of the story. Trying to invoke very deep thoughts and, and, and feelings. But what One Last Kiss tells us is that there is no point in trying to think deep. There is no point in trying to achieve anything great or grand by the end. Because at the end, we still have to move on and continue to live our lives. And we should always have hope for the future. And that is extremely sweet, but also kind of touching. Almost makes me tear up. So uh, the more I listen to One Last Kiss, the more I love it. The more I appreciate how uh, hopeful it is. How much it goes beyond the depth and the sadness. Just to bring out the essence of love for life. And um, yeah, powerful, powerful song. Alright, at number 4, I'm giving it to uh, probably my most listened song in 2021. And that is MF Doom and Bad Bad Not Good with the Chocolate Conquistador. So first of all, rest in peace to MF Doom. What a poet. He is a poet. He is a hip-hop poet and a total legend and a villain. And uh, with Bad Bad Not Good. And this song here is actually a cover of uh, of a song of a same name but in Spanish. Los Conquistadores Chocolates in the year 1975 by a man named John, John Harris, I believe. And uh, this is a cover song and... I really, really freaking love it. I am addicted to this song. I keep on listening to this song again and again and again and again in the first half of 2021. I just can't stop replaying it. It is just that great. The song is a beautiful amalgamation of hip-hop and funk and jazz. And the jazziness of this track is unreplaceable and untouchable. The very funky... Uh, keyboards, the rolling drums are super smooth, the soaring guitars, they all melt together and it sounds like heaven. It sounds so beautiful and 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 just so full of movement. It's it's so refreshing at the same time. It's so live lively and uh it, it's just so much fun and I just can't stop listening to it. And um, yes, it's number four favorite song. All right, for my top three of the year, um, I might as well put a three-way tie because these three songs are three of the most bold and ambitious artistic masterpieces of the year. And to place any of them at number one, we'll be ignoring the other two. But uh, so uh, yeah, I wish I could give this a three-way tie, but if I really, really, really had to rank them at number three, it's Little Sims with Introvert. Wow! The first time I listened to this song, it sent chills up my spine. It is a very bold and grand and powerful rap song. And it's basically Little Sims taking hip hop to such, uh, to such uh, a huge level, to such a, a great level that it honestly feels like uh, <laughs> I'm watching an opening to uh, a, an epic fantasy movie or something with the very loud banging drums that are rolling, swirly strings, the blasting horns, and then we have these very epic vocal choirs and chants. This track just opens off with so much power and impression. It is honestly amazing. It's goosebumps inducing. And then we have Lil Sims hopping onto the track, rapping, but with lyrics involving war and nations and kingdoms and governments. And it just feels so freaking grand. It's so huge. It's so beyond everything. And yet the choruses are so sweet and concise. And uh, it also ends off on a very theatrical note. The whole track is just one very theatrical and, and cinematic opening for an album that's just uh, powerful and uh, it's crazy, this, this vision that Lil Sims has is being played out on this track. At number two, I am giving it to Black Midi Slow. So I really love John L, don't get me wrong, but Slow here is something special. Slow is a track that I've never heard anything like that before. It is part prog, part jazz, Part, I don't even know. It's just a really strange 
blend of genres. It just feels like a genre in and of itself. It's a ever-changing dynamic creature that grows like every single 10 seconds of slow sounds different because it constantly changes the guitar rhythms the the chords the pace the tempo the the timbre everything about the song just constantly changes yet it doesn't sound like a mess it just sounds like an ever-evolving creature of of layers of jazz like we got saxophones and these these very rubbery uh robust bass these are uh, very soft vocals provided by cameron picton here and it's just a very enveloping and strange creature and i just really really love it the lyrics are very existential it's about dying but slowly when will it end when will i finally go the music video is fantastic as well and overall this is one of the most innovative tracks i've ever heard number one Favorite song of 2021? I'm running out of time now, so I gotta be quick. Spelling. Boys at School. Wow, this song. Uh, this song is a special song for me. I think uh, uh, when I first heard it, I love it. I, I thought this is a really magical, fantastical, enchanting song. But the more I listen to it, the more I see and hear the details of the song and it's sort of like an onion it has many layers of appeal and the more i listen to it the more i fall in love with it and now it's just my number one favorite song of the year it is not only an absolutely spellbinding enchanting song that sounds like a witch's song it sounds like witches are singing i mean the reverby effects the layered vocals that dissipate front and back it's all very immersive and strange but also the whole track is structurally very very well written it starts off with these very sad and lonely pianos and then it sort of builds up with these very buzzy synths and then the song actually has one of the hardest beat drops of the year and into the beat drop we have these very crispy tight drums and then it sort of builds up with these foreboding pianos bong 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 and then we have uh the uh, uh these creaking noises i don't know what instrument is this maybe it's a guitar maybe it's a detuned guitar maybe it's a door creaking but it's like <laughs> it's just all these small bits of noise that don't seem to make sense at all all coming together for this almost futuristic but also at the same time kind of witch witchcrafty experience and on top of that the of course the song sounds amazing the soaring guitars and the very dejected ending is uh, amazing i can't think of a better way to end off the track and also the lyrics about isolation loneliness and uh finding your self-identity is amazing it's great and i can relate to those lyrics to a certain degree and yeah this is honestly uh, a great artistic statement front to back no bullshit and um, it is ambitious it is bold it is spine chilling and if you listen to this song on in heat with earphones or with a headset and there's no one around and you close your eyes you really feel like you're being transported to a world of of like shadows and and dissipating imagery and it's such a strong imagery so um yeah what else can i say i love this song so what are your favorite songs of 2021 comments below let me know thanks for watching